Good morning, everyone. It is 9 o'clock. Welcome back to CW Iowa Live for this Friday. And our friends over at Stivers Ford Lincoln, downright proud to salute great organizations in town. And when we find out about a gathering, something going on that's really special, we want to make sure that we bring it to you like this one here. Hops for Hospice, Jackie. That's right. And we want to introduce you to the director of Hospice, Christopher Kirschbaum, this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the organization. Yeah, Hospice, we serve patients who are uh, nearing the end of life or dealing with chronic illness that is life limiting. And it's just a great, um, it's a different type of care. You know, we look at a holistic approach to how we uh, take care of the patient and focus on their needs and their family. There you go. So something very important, a, a very emotional time for most people, but you want to bring a little bit of comfort there Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Now, there's a special event coming up that we want everybody to know about. So, Allison, you're here to talk about that. Alice, uh, Allison Stratlander, uh, what's this event that we're trying to promote today? Well, this event is called Hops for Hospice, and it's put on by Unity Point Hospice which is part of Unity Point Health Des Moines. Mm -hmm. And it's our fifth annual event, and it is held down at the um, Paul R. Knapp Animal Learning Center, which is down at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Okay. And the money that's raised from this event um, benefits our patient assistance fund for both our, our at-home hospice patients and our um, facility called Taylor House Hospice. And this year it's presented by r, &R Realty. They presented us last year and they're doing it again this year. It's a great evening. It's from 5.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, September 29th. And it's just a great chance for the community to come together um, and raise money for this wonderful cause. Um, there's an array of specialty beers that are provided and presented by Iowa Beverage, which is a local um, company. And um, we have lots of dessert tables set up and live music, and it's just a great way for our community and our employees and staff and um, people to come together and celebrate hospice. As you can say, it's called Hops for Hospice. Yep. So it's just a, a, a party? Or, 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 <laughs> what, what are we doing if we come out to this great event? Well, like I said, it um, actually is a chance to come out and sample 40 different specialty beers that Iowa Beverage um, brings out for all of us to try. It's really fun. Um, so you can go around and sample um, different beers if you like beer. People tend to really enjoy this event. Um, we also have four different food stations set up um, with lots of different things to choose from. Jethro's is one of the vendors that um, has come every year and supported this cause, which is really nice. Um, and then we do have live music, so if you like music, it's great. Um, Brad Seidenfeld comes, he's come the last two years and does a great job. So, so. this is an all-inclusive event. This yes. is an entire evening of entertainment. It is, it's $75, and that includes all the beer sampling and food, and you still can purchase tickets um, up until the day of the event mm -hmm. on our website, which is www.hopsforhospice.com. DSM.com. Well, besides providing funding, uh, there's a lot of great volunteers that also make hospice uh, what it is, and we wanted to bring an example of a volunteer in this morning. So thank you, Mary Alice, for being here. Thank you. Tell us the perspective of being a volunteer for hospice. Volunteer is such a rewarding opportunity. Um, we have over a hundred volunteers. Wow. We have people who um, just read to patients. We're there to comfort and to find needs that the patient might have. We but, get to spend more time with them. But you are kind of a unique volunteer because I did not realize the type of volunteer that you are is, is kind of a, a cool deal. Uh, tell everybody what you do. Partic I have a hospice therapy dog mm -hmm. and um, he supplies lots of love and comfort to people and we have other therapy dogs and the dogs will be part of the dogs not all of them but snuffy <laughs> will be there somebody will, somebody will be there <laughs> there will be like four other dogs that will also be at the hops for hospice so you get an opportunity to see what the patients see and uh, it's it's just a way to bring out in patients with if their families are visiting or grandchildren when the dog comes in then everybody remembers everybody's had a pet or known somebody that had a pet I didn't realize you did that yes so they actually go into the patient's room many times because I have a small dog he's up on the bed with them and and the petting is is just a way to relax people and and to draw out the families 
We've talked about this before in our program, and I believe you were doing a call yeah. for yes, seeking volunteers, more volunteers, yes. and volunteer Snuffy, yes. animals. Are you still? Yes, we're always looking for good animals and good owners. And leash holders. Leash holders. I'm a leash holder and the chauffeur. There you go. Do you need previous training or is training provided they, or how does that work? Um, they, obedience is a huge part of it. So if they have some obedience training, but the, what determines a hospice dog from another volunteer dog is the temperament. Mm -hmm. We're looking for dogs. It's a quiet moment. It's not somebody that's happy and runs around and does tricks. They're that when they're at home, right. <laughs> but they need to be quiet. They need to be relaxing because you want to relax that family. So you're looking you don't for a mellow, agitate. a mellow pet. Yes, okay. they have to be at least a year old okay. before they can even enter the program. And then we have someone who trains the dogs um, for the program and, and passes a test to see if they do qualify. Where should people go if they're saying, you know what, I would like to volunteer or I they have an They can call the hospice volunteer program, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. yep, and that's on our um, website. Mm -hmm. So on Unity Point's website. We so how many people are gonna be attending this event? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have about 350 attending at this point, so we hope to reach 400. Um, and one thing I will say is that without the support, we would not have the Patient Assistance Fund, and it's very u unique to Unity Point. There's a lot of hospice organizations in this community mm -hmm. that don't aren't allowed to provide that for patients. And what exactly is um, that? How, is, how, do you yeah, how does that differ? Our Patient Assistance Fund, why it's set up, it, it allows anyone in our community that would like to have hospice care the ability to do so if they cannot afford to pay for it. And in that time in your life, it's a very um, hard, hard time. Stressful time. And very stressful. And you want your loved one to be comforted and be in a place where they can be cared for in a way that um, they feel like they have um, the support of people that know what they're doing and that are kind hearted um, and can be there not only to support the patient, but also the family, because it's a very difficult time for the family as well. I was going to say, because so. obviously the patient is, is very stressful for what they're going through, but the family in general too, and you're there to help them. Yes. So last year, um, because of this event and donations from other people through memorials um, and other events that we, smaller events that we do, we were able to provide 50 families, patients and their families, um, wow. patient assistance through Unity That Point would not hospice. have been able to afford it before. That would not be right. able to have right. hospice care. Because so, Christopher, hospice is a very special thing that we want to make sure everybody can enjoy. Absolutely. What Allison and her team do is amazing for our patients in our community because it allows us the opportunity to not turn anybody away to receive hospice care. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really very important um, for our patients and families. Now if somebody is in that very uncomfortable position right now where they have to make that determination uh, whether or not they have someone that will be placed into hospice type care, uh, how do they get a hold of you guys? Uh, they can actually call um, our main office at 515-557-3100 uh, mm -hmm. and ask for a hospice or they can ask their primary doctor to have a hospice consult. Okay. Um, if they're in their primary doctor's office or if they're in the hospital, um, they can ask for hospice as well. Yeah, because it's again, more and more people are taking advantage of uh, hospice care, and this is one alternative. So yes, absolutely. Wonderful. What you guys are doing is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, thank you all for your assistance, Allison. Well, before we you. go, remind everybody the details so they can come out and enjoy hops for hospice. Okay, it will be next Thursday evening, September 29th at the Animal Learning Center down at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. It's $75, and that includes your food and drink and live entertainment. There it is, right. perfect. So we well, hope to best see you. of luck to you. Hopefully you get a full house. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, we will be right back. You know, Stivers, Fort Lincoln, downright proud to let you know all about that. Fidelity Bank folks are here. They're in next on CW Iowa Live. <laughs>